Good. Uh, question. Quo Vadis, where are you going? We're all on a journey through life. Not all of us are aware of our destination. We may be just drifting along with a family or friends and may even suffer being pulled in various directions by people and circumstances. Strangely enough, most people are hoping to arrive at a pleasant destination at the end of their lives. For example, the place called heaven or a state called Nirvana, which is nowhere. <clears throat> now I am ending, nearing the end of my journey and in the present state of pandemic, it is possible that any time you see me might be the last time you see me till the other side of the grave. So I must make it my business to remind you of a few things just as the Apostle Peter did in 2 Peter 2. And we'll be in that chapter all the time. So if we go anywhere else, just remember to keep the place. 2 Peter chapter 1. As um, uh, Peter wrote this, as he himself was preparing to depart from his camp tent for heaven. Let's read here. The first sentence is four verses. And it includes the phrase, through the knowledge twice repeated it seems that knowing god is very important there are other repeated phrases which we will consider today in the second sentence verses five to seven the phrase repeated most in this chapter is these things and so uh, i'm going to talk about these things <clears throat> to peter one verse one simon peter a servant and an apostle of jesus christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given, um, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these the promises ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things ye shall never fail or fall for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ wherefore i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things though ye know them and be established in the present truth yea I think in meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir up, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now God will uh, give a great blessing to the reading of his word. <clears throat> um, I might have to go backwards to make the thing um, more motivated, but let's see. Verse 1 indicates that the letter is addressed to people who have obtained similar precious faith. Now there is more, not for salvation, but for a good departure, a successful test and a good arrival. Um, 
You see, uh, we are saved by faith. That's what saves us. But there's more. I see I need to go backwards through the chapter to put things in place for you. There are a few precious things in this chapter. And in the uh, 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 first book of Peter, there's a, a list of precious things. But this is not my subject for today. Um, there are some more urgent things for me today to remind you of some important things to make sure as you continue on your journey where are you heading satan uh, in churches through the centuries has sold tickets to heaven but his train train never goes even near there beware of false professions of faith in 1 peter 1 uh, sorry 2 peter 1 in our chapter verse 10 says therefore my brothers and sisters make every effort to confirm your calling and election it's not just accidental that you've been elected or called because the lord is called whosoever this means that it's my responsibility to make sure that i've come to the cross as a sinner and sick and accepted jesus uh, commitment to bear my debt for me and that i've committed my whole life to him in exchange so that we can be sure there is a commitment on both sides to the salvation that he bought for me at great cost to himself i have done this if i've done this then i can be sure that i'm on the right train going to my chosen destination jesus told us how many people are on the right track can you remember how many people are going on the right track few make sure that you are one of the few also please remember that god does not have any grandchildren i must come to the father on my own through the son i can't hang on to my parents at the rapture two small words all and few christ died for all but only few choose the narrow way and become the elect of God. Somehow, uh, there's also the quality of the journey to consider as well. Um, I just want to refer you to uh, the previous book, 1 Peter 4, for one verse, and I'll read it for you. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Um, it's a very hard word that. The righteous are scarcely saved. And so he's talking about the few here, yeah? and we need to make sure that we are part of that few. Have you made sure of your calling and election? Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't even wait till the end of my message. It's more important than that. If you have committed yourself to him, he will commit himself to you. This is a two-party covenant, and it cannot be broken ever. because. Jesus never loses any of his own. Never, never. Now, after we've settled the destination, heaven, we can go on to the next important motivation. See, this chapter uh, tells us a lot of things that are expected of a Christian, and then what the Christian can expect. There'll be, a, there'll be a, a, an arrival in heaven. Having made sure of your calling and election, how will your arrival in, in heaven be announced it all depends remember and i want you to take note of the saying i cannot accept the christ of christianity without committing to the christianity of christ i'll say that again i cannot accept the christ of christianity without committing to the christianity of christ now i can complete reading uh, verse 10 of uh, 2 peter 1 and read a hugely important phrase that appears several times in this chapter uh, verse um, verse 10 for if you do these things you will never stumble if you do these things you will never stumble which things are these things and why are they so important and urgent that they are mentioned so many times in this chapter. After list, you can almost call this chapter the chapter of these things. 
uh, they mentioned so many times. I have to list and expand on them for you before I leave off speaking as Peter did before his executioners came to take him away. They are important for you because of the next verse and that is why I'm going through the chapter backwards so that you will take note first that you will never stumble. This is why you have to think of these things so that you'll never stumble. Secondly, for the quality of the announcement of your arrival in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And it says, if you remember these things, verse 11, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is, that is in the NIV, you'll receive a rich welcome. Let's have that verse again in, in Old English. For so an entrance shall be ministered, ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what does this mean? It means that you'll have a grand entrance, perhaps like the guests arriving at a royal ball. Can you imagine the welcome given to the Apostle Paul, Peter, or Billy Graham? What's the alternative expectations? Let's see. If we go and visit 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. Uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking about building um, on the foundation of Jesus. For um, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any, man, if any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. How would you like to be welcome into heaven with a well done good and faithful servant entered into the joy of your Lord or come inside smelling like smoke, wood smoke or straw smoke, saved yet so is by fire. You see there are choices involved in your arrival in heaven. And so Peter says now I will already in verse 2 Peter 1 verse 12 so I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon be put it aside as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. The main thrust of this chapter is keeping these things. They will guarantee four things. One, that he, we will be sure of our salvation and that we will not fall and will be established in the truth and that we will bear fruit or much fruit. That's what brings glory to God. Verse 1 says that we have obtained precious faith but to have a good entrance into heaven, this faith, uh, to this faith, we need to add the following progressive steps. One building on another as a product of our faith being attached naturally to, to each other, like the development of a natural body. For instance, um, um, Niresh. Niresh was born with his teeth and his beard, but they just had to still come out. And uh, these things are not added from the outside, but from the inside. These things that we're talking about are added from the insides, uh, like infant's teeth coming progressively from the genetic information of the body. We are saved by faith. And then to that faith, we are expected by purposeful living to add the following. 
Um, and this word add means to supply without stinting or generously, to supply. We have to supply to add to our faith. We've got to supply these things. And the first one is virtue. The first item uh, is virtue. Now, that's easily explained. It's just goodness. Uh, that's uh, in 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 uh, Galatians chapter five. It's one of the fruits of fruit of the spirit, and it's goodness. Um, it's spiritual character, um, moral cleanness, excellent living. That's what virtue is, and um, then it it will develop the next one. Uh, how can we please someone? We want to please the Lord. How can we please Him if we don't know what He likes? And so the next virtue uh, or a property we need is knowledge. If you want to ensure good God's approval and to avoid taking a wrong path of doctrine or lifestyle which displeases God, you need to know what God means in the scriptures, allowing the word to guide our lives and, and knowing God himself and his son. So that knowledge isn't just information from the Bible, it's knowing God, knowing his son, knowing the Holy Spirit, knowing is in your life and he works in your life and he teaches you through the word of God. And so you get to know God and his character and knowing him as our own God. This does not come by osmosis. It takes time and application and uh, the reward is his approval. Knowing the father and the son are mentioned in this chapter several times. Get to know the Lord and then get to know his word, get to know his will. So that is number two. Now to knowledge, we've got to add temperance. Uh, that's not just uh, drinking a little bit and, uh, and doing bad things a little bit. It's got nothing to do with that. It has to do with a well-balanced behavior. Everything in our life should be um, well-balanced and it includes, um, uh, it's not just uh, drink and gluttony, it means control of all our emotions and all our actions and all our reactions to others uh, when they test us and tempt us and try us our reactions are being tested and they should be done with temperance resisting the temptation to um, to uh, react in the same way that we've been tested and so um, the christian should resist temptation everyone is tempted but the christian should resist, resist temptation maintain a good testimony um, our speech in particular and participation in worldly or profane conversations uh, should not be done by us. And having good control of our temper is also important. A soft answer turns away the wrath. Succeeding here avoids having to apologize to anyone, including the Lord. Remember, um, temperance is maintaining a good balance of our emotions and then attached to um, Temperance and coming from temperance is patience. Number four, patience, it's separately mentioned because it has a, a bit more of a meaning than just being soft and gentle. It means, um, it also means enduring, enduring suffering, enduring under pressure, maintaining our faith even during affliction and persecution. It includes stickability with things are hard to bear. And um, succeeding here achieves a well done. It includes testing even though God's answers to our prayers are not immediately forthcoming. I remember in, in Daniel, he had to wait three weeks for an answer to one of his prayers. And he endured in his faith with great patience. And uh, when we have this uh, the hymn we've just sung, it is well with my soul, will come out in our lives. No matter what happens, um, no matter how we have to wait for God's answers, how matter hard is how hard his answers may be, with temperance and patience we'll be able to sing, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, and what whatever comes along, we'll be able to with patience say, It is well with my soul. The next item comes from this, and it's godliness. This is a state of mind that loves God and acknowledges God as my Savior and my Master and my Lord. A godly person wishes to know God and 
and know his will and know his wishes and to please him all the time like Job. The natural man wishes to go his own way. Um, but uh, when a Christian uh, starts falling for his natural self, he stops uh, obeying God and he will cease to have a joy of the Lord and he appears to disqualify himself from the joys that come from godliness. He becomes unsure of his salvation and he becomes selfish and believes that God is unfair. Take note of a Christian, man or woman, who finds it hard to obey a clear instruction from God's word. The joy leaves that person. A godly person evangelizes and serves his fellow man joyfully in God's name and does not fear when people mock or misunderstand. He's blameless before man in all his behavior, like Daniel, uh, turning the other cheek. And so that godliness uh, comes from from um, uh, uh, temperance and patience and um, virtue. And uh, now the next one is brotherly kindness or love. The word here is one word, Philadelphia. Uh, it's love of brethren. Notice that this is attached to godliness. A brotherly kindness comes from godliness. This is one of the commandments from the beginning. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, for my brethren, what's mine, should be considered as theirs as well. An Israelite was not supposed to enslave another Israelite for debt. Disobedience to this law was called violence by the Lord and brought about the captivity to other nations because the leaders of the people disregarded this law and enslaved their own nation. And so they were taken captive. Brotherly love should come naturally to a believer. Love of his brother, love of his uh, sister, love of the brethren. And this should cross over denominational lines as well. Brother, a brother is a brother. Uh, the seventh item, the seventh attribute of a Christian. Remember these, you, you have faith. But these seven things have to come after the faith and they have to be added to it. But it comes from inside. Charity, pen, or love. This is a self-sacrificing, long-lasting, tenacious love. Jesus qualified this as, as I have loved you. The chorus says, Jesus first, myself last, and others in between. People must feel and know that we love them. It doesn't have to be a big deed. It should be a perceived attitude of loving and caring. It should be real enough for both God and man to recognize it. If you've put your faith in Jesus, that's good. Now start searching for these seven things these things seven attributes of the faithful if you've got faith you now have to add these seven things into your life um, they should be uh, in your life in the order given by the apostle peter they seem to depend on one another start um, searching start with faith have i got it yes and go down the list and ask the lord to develop them in you as you pray about them, um, you will become conscious of any shortfall. If you pray about them, you'll be conscious of it. And if you persevere in prayer, you will start succeeding in practice. Prayer brings practice, and they will develop one upon another as you desire to please the Lord. Peter says that if we lack these things, we are deliberately short-sighted, having forgotten that we were cleansed for our, from our old sins. That's in our chapter. Please also remember that the end product is the quality of your welcome into heaven as you arrive and whatever follows. Um, when the saints come marching in, just imagine Job and Daniel's welcome. Ezra, Nehemiah, Mordecai, Paul, John, 
Won't it be worth it all if you arrive to a well done, good and faithful servant? You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Or would you rather march in smelling of smoke as the things you built down here burn up at the first test, having tears of regret being wiped from your eyes? May the Lord bless us all that we, as we strive to be well pleasing to him, him who loved us and gave himself to save us. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this um, chapter about these things. We thank you for these things. We thank you they've been made plain to us. And we pray that uh, we may add them to our faith, our Lord. We've been saved through faith, and yet these have to be added. Would you help us to do that, that they may come through uh, the new life that Jesus has implanted in us through his Holy Spirit. We pray that we may strive to be like these uh, uh, men like Daniel who had all of these things, and Nehemiah, uh, the faithful servant Lord, and Job, uh, a faithful person who trusted God, and all those things were found in him. So we pray that we may just study a word, find out what your will is, that we may do it and seek to please you in all our deeds, our Lord, and in all our thoughts, in all our words, words in all our songs, in all our attitudes, in all our interactions with men and women, boys and girls that may um, uh, come across our path. And Lord, may we be in such a witness that they would come to us and ask us uh, what it is and ask us to help them to receive the same thing. Bless us as we seek to please you. And may we all, our Lord, each one in this uh, platform today, come to the end of our lives and be announced with dignity, Lord, as we arrive. This is my faithful servant. Um, enter into the joy of your Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we um, go into our lives and seek to please you. Be with us, Lord, and give us our safety. Uh, keep us under the shelter of your uh, wings, our Lord, and keep that sword of the angel away from our dear ones in this little flock and from our families as well, Lord. And we pray that you'll touch those who have um, been infected and that they may come to be well again. We pray then once again for our land that you'll protect our uh, president from the evil men around him, that he may be safe and that he may be able to pursue um, an honest uh, government, Lord, and uh, uh, direct the um, removal of those who are not so. Bless us, Lord, as a little nation. We pray also for our, the territories around us, all endangered, our Lord, and uh, enslaved. Would you uh, bless and bring release, our Lord? And we also thank you that uh, Chrissy Lukonga and his companion was set free, and we pray they may safely reach their home bases, Lord, and be able to assist the assemblies there. Bless us as we go into this week that we may know your presence with us, O Lord, and your power in our lives and the joy of knowing Jesus and the, the confidence we have in knowing your word, knowing what pleases you and doing the same. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful, precious, holy and gracious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Uncle Lal.